Am I the a hole for keeping food in my room? Plus update. Original post. I-19 female have a full-time job and pay $500 rent a month. I still live with my father, my stepmom, stepsister, and unfortunately my stepbrother, 22 male. My stepbrother doesn't have a job, doesn't plan to get one, just sits at home all day on his butt eating up all of our food and playing video games. My dad won't do anything about it because he loves my stepmom. But my stepmom won't do anything because she loves her son, and this is how she raised him. They came into my life when I was 8 years old, and it's always been this way. She cuddles him, doesn't punish him, and she lets him do whatever the heck he wants, which includes eating all the food in the house. I remember when I was 12, and my older half-sister still lived with us. She had some friends over, so we ordered a large pizza. We ate almost half of it, and put the rest in the fridge so we could have pizza for breakfast, right? No. That bomb ate the rest of it by himself in the middle of the night. By the way, we ordered pizza because there was no other food in the house. Ever since they moved in, we haven't had a full fridge. Anyway, I have a small stash of food in my room now, in one of those rubber totes, so the chance of ants and whatnot is minimum. I keep chips, bottled pops, bread slash bagels, and most recently, cracker barrel boxed mac and cheese in there. I've been craving mac and cheese like crazy recently, so I bought a few boxes and stashed them away. Last night I made a box of mac and cheese, but my stepbrother wandered out of his room and asked where I got the mac and cheese from, because we currently don't have food, though his mom is running to the grocery store as I'm typing this. So I told him from my room, and he asked what I meant. I told him I keep food in my room so someone doesn't eat all of my stuff. I put a big emphasis on someone when talking to him. He called me an a-hole and asked why I wouldn't share my food with everyone. I called him an a-hole right back and said maybe if you don't eat so much, there would be more food to go around. I guess we were kind of loud because my dad came upstairs and asked what we were yelling about. And my stepbrother literally freaking tattled on me and saying I'm keeping food in my room away from everyone. My dad asked if I was serious. So I told him something along the lines of, yes, I am, because I'm sick and tired of waking up hungry because there's no food in the house. I pay you more than enough rent to get food for everyone. I also threw in how my stepbrother doesn't even have a job, and he's a lazy moocher who doesn't contribute anything, and then stormed off to my room, with my mac and cheese, of course. I don't really think I'm an a-hole, but my dad texted me and told me that it was really unnecessary for me to say all that, and to keep food in my room because other people are hungry too. I texted one of my cousins about it, and she sided with my dad, so I'm just second-guessing myself here. Please let me know if I'm the a-hole. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. You are not stashing food from family pantry. You are buying your own food. The mistake was letting the secret out. Yeah, you're very right about that. I never said I was the brightest. I think I just wanted to stick it to him, but now I realized my mistake. Yeah, dude. You messed up revealing you have a stash. Don't be surprised when it disappears. All you needed to say was you bought it, and if he wants some, he should get off his butt and go buy it like you had to. Just wondering, does your stepbrother who is 3 years older not pay any rent while you pay 500 bucks? I would be less mad about the food and more upset about the mixed standards. No, he doesn't pay rent, but I'm also not really expected to pay rent. I just feel for my dad because he's constantly stressing over money, but I know he'd never actually ask me for it. He was kind of embarrassed when I started paying him rent, to be honest, but I knew he could use it. So I'm not upset about the rent aspect. I mean, I kind of am because I know my stepbrother is freeloading, but I'm choosing to do this myself. Not the a-hole. You may want to get a container that locks to store your food. Now that they know it's there, your family will absolutely steal it. I'm not worried about the rest of my family. Trust my stepbrother. Luckily, my dad is pretty lenient in most things, so I do have a lock on my door. I'll start locking it whenever I leave for work now. Thanks for the tip. Not the a-hole. Up the ante and get yourself a mini fridge with padlock and microwave for your room. Haha, <laughs> I've been thinking about that. However, I do have plans to move out by the end of this year, fingers crossed. So I don't want to waste any of my savings on being petty just yet. If it gets any worse, I might have to though. Now for the update. So, I did what a lot of you suggested and had a sit-down talk with my dad when he got home from work. The first thing he said before we even began talking was apologizing because he understood where I was coming from and he just didn't want to deal with my brother's bitterness. 
I said that is fine, and then asked where he was spending all of my money, because the mortgage is paid off, and all we have are utilities and car payments, and lots of car repairs because both cars are hunks of junk. This took him by surprise, and asked what I meant. I told him that I pay him more than enough to have some money left over to buy food for the house, especially with my stepsister giving him rent too. He just said stuff for the house. So, I went with someone suggested and told him that from now on, I'll be buying the groceries and giving him whatever's left over from the $500 a month for rent. He told me I don't need to do that, that it wasn't necessary, yada yada, which kind of irked me, but whatever. I then asked if he was going to do anything about a food problem in the house, and this apparently finally broke him. And he told me that he's been keeping all the money I give him for the rent in a separate savings account for when I move out. I was honestly speechless. I gave him the money because he's always tied on it and stressing over it, and this man has been saving it for me. I immediately apologized for being kind of a brat about the situation. I had an attitude because I was sick of everything, and told him to please use whatever he needs so we don't have to deal with it anymore. It took some convincing, but he said he's still only going to use what's absolutely necessary, but said that I can buy groceries once a month and put the rest of the $500 in my savings. So thank you everyone for the advice. Some people have also suggested I talk to my stepbrother and try to motivate him or even try to figure out what's wrong with him. Not the best way to put it, but I don't know how else. And I will do that eventually. But now isn't really the time. For now, everything seems to be good, so thank you again. Anyone else wondering how long it'll take before stepbrother breaks into her room to steal her food now that he knows is there? That was my initial reaction as well. She needs to lock that food stash up tighter than Fort Knox. Agreed. I'm very surprised the update didn't start with Stepbrother broke into my room and ate all the food I had. Anyone else wondering how long it'll be before she figures out Dad has no savings account for her? Am I the only cynical one here? Nah. I'll go with something like the stepmother draining it to pay for stuff for the stepbrother because their family and Opie should share. I honestly can't see him saving the money if they are struggling to buy food. The money is going somewhere. But I do not believe there is a secret stash of money and savings for her. Sounds like maybe stepmom taught her precious baby the ropes and getting by with no contribution. Dad and Opie would be wise to have a family meeting and ask that between the two of them, they at least contribute enough monthly to buy two weeks of food. Dad isn't going to do anything. He went after his daughter instead of his stepson when he knew his daughter wasn't the right, just because it's more difficult. Standing up to his wife is even more difficult than that. I doubt he's suddenly going to grow a spine. Next story. Am I the a-hole for choosing my trip over babysitting my niece? Plus update. I, 27 female, have been planning a long trip abroad for some time now. I work remote, so it's easy to pick up and go, and this is my first time doing it. I was laid off recently, but since I have a lot of money saved and a trip has already been paid for, I've decided to go for a sabbatical. For months, I have had to convince my parents, grandparents, and siblings that I am going to safe places, that I have enough money, and that they don't need to worry. I finally had them in a good spot, and I'll leave in about two weeks. Recently, though, things have changed. I normally end up taking care of my niece, 2 female, for my sister, 32 female, at least once a week. My sister goes to work three days a week and works two days from home. And her husband, 39 male, works from home, but has to stay near his computer at all times since he works in customer service. On the weekends, they enjoy going out to things like hockey games, dinner, etc. I normally take care of my niece during those times. It tends to work out because they will go out on Sunday, so I will have my Friday and Saturday nights. But with this trip, of course I will not be able to babysit. My sister was joking about this one day, and recently my parents have been asking a lot about my trip, and what about my niece? I was confused and asked them to elaborate. Apparently, two years old is an important time in a child's life, and they said that she wouldn't remember me when I got home. They want me to shorten my non-refundable trip and come home earlier so I don't miss out on any milestones. I told them that I couldn't and that it was final, and now they have been amping up the guilt. They have also gotten my grandparents involved, the only support I have is my brother, 30 male, who also never sees my niece except for special occasions. They are also bringing up my recent layoff and my financial state. I don't want to brag, but for a 27-year-old, I have a high enough savings that I could live for a year and never work. I've been laid off a lot, so savings was a priority. I could still travel and do everything I want. I have no loans, no current apartment now, and have all the big things paid for. 
But despite my knowing I am fine, they are starting to scare me and guilt trip me to staying. Tonight, it all blew over. My sister called me in a hall in front of my family since I won't be able to babysit. What is she supposed to do on the weekends? I yelled at her and told her to finally hire a babysitter. My parents are on her side and told me that you should help out more. I yelled at all of them that it was not my responsibility to parent the child if they could live for a few weeks without their free babysitter and then left. My brother texted me later that they are still angry and disagreed with my choice to continue my trip. Am I the a-hole for choosing my trip over my knees? Edit. A lot of people have asked. I will be gone for just under four months. I will be traveling around Europe with a short trip to visit a friend in South Korea and coming home. I suppose that that would be more than just a few weeks. Lol. But not the point. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. You didn't birth the child. You simply extended your helping hand toward your sister, who has absolutely taken advantage of the goodwill of you babysitting. Go low contact and get on the plane. I'm sure there's a few milestones you'll miss, but if your family wants you to see those milestones, maybe they should take pictures. FaceTime you? Don't feel guilty and don't stay. Otherwise, you'll regret not taking your trip. And your sister should be looking after her own kid on the weekend. Or maybe your parents should be if anyone is so concerned with babysitting. Enjoy your trip. If not low contact, cut down on the babysitting. Like once in a couple of months if you feel generous. And there's no need at all for family permission to go away on holiday either. No. No more free babysitting. This is how it started. Occasional babysitting turned into a regular Sunday thing. Now they want you to put your life on hold so you can watch the child they created. When my son was two, I took him to another country with my mother. My husband was gonna join us two weeks later as he was short on vacation time. Guess what? Kid remembered his dad. He even knew his paternal grandparents and maternal great aunt, whom he never met before and only saw on FaceTime once a week. So, kid will remember you. Oh, and don't be talked into any family holiday either. You know your sister is going to dump her kid in your lap. Tell your sister to suck it up. And tell your parents to help out more. Enjoy your trip. Now for the update. Hey everyone. First off, I want to thank everyone that commented on my last post. It blew up, so I wanted to update really quickly. I wanted to answer a few questions. One, yes, I have a year's worth of savings. This means that I can pay for rent and other expenses for up to one year without a job. Two, I do plan on continuing to look for a new position and take interviews when I can. I hope that I can get a new one because in my state, I am unable to get a new apartment without proof of income at my age. Three, I only moved back in with my parents temporarily. It's been a month. I wanted to save money and not have an apartment. They're also storing all of my stuff. They are normally okay parents, but they play favorites. Four, I will not go no contact with my family, but maybe low contact. They are important to me, but I will take your advice to stop babysitting every Sunday for my niece. It's obviously been a bad habit for my sister and brother-in-law. On to the update. Today was my niece's birthday. It was a small get-together of my family and some friends, and it was a really good time. After the party, my sister pulled me aside. She apologized for getting my mom up in arms about babysitting. She knew I wanted to go on the trip. We hugged and I accepted her apology. For your information, my mom and I don't really get along. I don't like how she treats people. And her favoritism has always caused some insecurity. Though she has helped me a lot and I am grateful to her, I will always be the bratty youngest daughter. And I've come to accept that. Unfortunately, because of her, I have this people-pleasing behavior that I am trying to break out of. Hence, the pure turmoil between choosing my trip over my niece. My mom is very controlling. And the only reason I am still in contact is because of my dad. He's my best friend. I would hate to leave him behind. He understands my problems with my mom. He hasn't tried to fix much. He doesn't know how. But he listens and takes my feelings into account. It means the world to me. When my mom heard my sister complain, she decided it was going to be a good way to keep me home. She told the family about how a little girl shouldn't be traveling alone. She's mentioned a Natalie Holloway case, and that set a lot of people off. She watches a lot of Lifetime and Dateline. That's why everyone started hounding me in the first place. Then, she added on my lack of a job and my other responsibilities like babysitting, so that everyone would agree that I shouldn't go. Now the big update is that I did choose my trip. In fact, I'm planning to extend. Maybe I'll travel more around Southeast Asia or go to Australia, since I will be over there. To be determined. But I wanted to thank everyone for the advice and the good wishes. 
You all have made me feel so much more confident about this trip. Thanks again. Edit. My parents do babysit once a week as well, just during the weekday since they are retired. Natalie Holloway was 18. You were 27, and that may make you a little girl if you're a tortoise or a Greenland shark. But as a human, it makes you a perfectly normal adult. Have a great trip, and Grey rock the F out of your mom. It's disappointing about a dad. Mom has apparently been pulling stuff like this for years, and he just throws his arms in the air. Defend your daughter, man. It's disappointing when kids can't understand that the other parents' sins are just as bad as the abusive ones if the other won't defend and protect the child. Sad. I wish people would get through their heads that the enabling parent is not nice. They are complicit. It's part of the screwed upness of growing up in such a family. There's one parent behaving badly, and you feel terrible around them. Then there's the other parent. If you spend time with them alone, you feel good. They listen. Maybe they even acknowledge you're having a difficult time. They don't fix it, but during your time with them, you felt more comfortable. It feels like the dynamic is set in stone. You can't do something about it. They say they can't do something about it, but at least they don't brush you off completely. The thought that they could actually do something to protect you doesn't cross your mind. In your eyes, they are the good parent because they sometimes give you a minimum of attention and you feel comfortable spending time with them in comparison to the other parent. It's difficult to wrap your head around the fact that they also failed you, but in a different way than the more obvious toxic parent.